The ACT matrix is a useful tool when working with children. Setting up the matrix the usual way will work, and there are several other ways to introduce the concepts depending on the child. Toward and away are often easily understood by children. If the words are fuzzy for them, we might substitute closer and farther. I use an image of a slingshot to reinforce the matrix. In the bottom right-hand box, I often begin with what things the child likes to do. Or things they like about whatever the focus of the matrix is. For example, family, school, and so on. The child can list these items, and from there, I probe for what abouts. What about those things does the child like? What about those things are important to them? I also try to draw out whose. Who is important in relation to these things? Who do they like to do these things with? And so on. Shifting over to the lower left hand, we ask what shows up on the inside that can hook them or stop them from doing those things or being with the people that are important to them. Just like a hook might prevent this slingshot from launching. To the top left, we explore what the child does when they are hooked by these things in the bottom left. We might also assess workability when appropriate. In the top right, we explore actions that could move a child closer to the life they want. In the center is me, who chooses what to aim for, notices what shows up on the inside, and can choose what they want to do in the moment. The matrix is also great for working with caregivers to help them notice what's going on in their own lives and for their kids. Often as clinicians working with children, we are initially presented with behaviors as the presenting concern, which have been identified by adults. It can be useful to use these patterns of behavior as a jumping off point and for conceptualization. We set the behavior as the topic of the matrix. Here, we're going to be using the example of not doing homework as the behavior. And we will assume that this behavior is an away move. and will begin to fill out in the matrix starting at the top left rather than the bottom right. We then move downward to the bottom left and probe for inner content that shows up around doing homework. We can ask questions like, when you think about or try to do the homework, what kinds of thoughts or feelings show up? From the responses gathered, we can begin to probe for what and who are important to the child. In this example, let's suppose that the child responded in a way that sounded a little bit like this. I can't do it as a thought that showed up around homework, or it's too hard, or I'll just fail. In this example, the child's responses in the lower left square are all centered around failure, competence, and intelligence. 
These qualities may be values to the child. Being competent at schoolwork, etc., could be a value. So we take what we've got here, and we try to shift them into their valued counterpart here. We draw out these values, working with the child, and then we work our way up to brainstorming committed actions. This may involve problem solving and solution focused work. In addition to connecting to the self, or the me in the middle, and doing mindfulness work. So here again we've started with a behavior pattern. We began the matrix in the top left hand quadrant with the way moves. We moved down to inner content over to exploring values and then up to committed actions.